you have 365 days. Today's video is Netflix's answer to Fifty Shades of Grey, I think. A couple of days back, I went on my Netflix and I saw on the homepage that there was this movie called 365 DNI and it had like the cover picture was great the little high notes they put there was great but my first thought was like with everything happening why would netflix suggest such a movie for me to watch and then i decided i was going to watch it and i have so many thoughts after watching it massimo is a member of the sicilian mafia family and laura is a sales director she does not expect that on a trip to sicily trying to save her relationship massimo will kidnap her and give her 365 days to fall in love with him so that's is the whole premise. In the first scene, we see two groups of people trying to broker this deal to traffic children. I was sad that my, my antenna was up like, how do you start a movie with child trafficking? And then the father got shot. And then we never addressed the father's shooting again because essentially he was assassinated. But I was like, nobody cared about it. There was no plans to seek revenge because your father died or did he know who shot his father? We were never made aware of that all we saw was five years later and to show you how serious i am about this movie i had notes while i was watching it lots and lots of notes because i think like there were so many questions i had about the movie my first problem with the movie was that anytime they spoke english it sounded like their voices were dubbed and it was so frustrating for me to watch it because I, I didn't enjoy it as much as i thought i would because anytime they spoke english it sounded like huh are you are you people the ones talking who, who is this terrible person speaking english this is the one thing i'll say about this movie this movie is a meals and boone book come to life this movie is what will happen if someone saw 50 shades of gray and was like i can do better and i'm trying to wonder how the conversation with the netflix executives went like hi yeah i have a movie for you like imagine 50 shades of gray but in europe and with a mafia family another thing about the movie was this music it's it they use an overabundance of music like you know there can never be too much of something but this was too much music there are certain scenes that didn't need music there are certain scenes that just needed to like breathe the scene needed to breathe we had to feel the human reaction to it but even the so-called scenes that were erotic were still filled with so much music. Before I move on, let me get to the elephant in the room about the movie. So the movie is billed as a BDSM movie, but we don't see a lot of BDSM in the movie. Like, it happened, we see it once, and even that once was under duress, and then we don't see it again. So I don't know why Netflix put that as one of the bullet points for me to watch it, because it did not feature any hint of BDSM. Not a whip, not a blindfold, nothing. This is false advertisement. That's how I felt. Because you advertise something and I didn't get it. And I was very offended about that because I was looking forward to a better version of Fifty Shades of Grey. And I mean, I don't even know why I thought it would be a better version because Fifty Shades of Grey was a dumpster fire. In the first couple of scenes, when you're introduced to Laura, we are always told that she has a heart condition that makes her collapse and faint at every point in time. But we are never told what the heart condition is. And midway through the movie, we abandon the fact that she has a heart condition. It's never mentioned again. Does she have a weak heart? Is she not supposed to overexert herself? Like, what? what exactly is it? But we're never told, so we don't know. Why were we introduced to a heart problem that was never going to be resolved or solved? You know how every story has a very cute, meet cute, where the protagonist meets his love interest, you know, that very nice way happens. Sometimes it happens in a coffee shop, spills coffee on you, drops your books, all those things. But this time, when we met for the first time, the question was, is he a vampire? Because all he asked was, what's up, baby girl? And I was like, ugh, God, if someone comes to me and tells me that, I think I'd run far, far away from him. And then his proposition that stay with me for over a year and after 365 days, you're supposed to fall in love with me. And I was like, what in the Stockholm Syndrome is that about? Because if someone comes with such a proposition, I would think that, first of all, you are kidnapping me and you want me to fall in love with you because why when he was describing her first time meeting the girl and how he had spent all this time searching and searching for the girl it reminded me of the little mermaid and it's just like someone you meet whilst you are dying once you're able to remember every fine detail and talk to an artist and the artist is able to reproduce all those details and then you keep paintings of such a person all over your house and you decide that you're going to you know pine after her till you meet her what if you never meet her what if she died then what? You're never going to fall in love. Then what? Your whole life is meaningless. Another thing that was odd about the movie is that we are not made aware of the passage of time. But the one thing I, I, I would say is that I did like her wedding dress because surprise, surprise, after two months, she decided that, oh, 
have fallen in love with you. Well, we, we don't show any chemistry between them. The only sort of chemistry we saw was when they were having sex. Sex isn't chemistry. Well, sex is chemistry, but sex isn't love. There's no playful banter between them. They only run hot and cold. One day they are fighting like, how dare you? I'm not going with you. And then and the next day they're having sex. So it's just like, when did they develop this relationship for her to be so sure and say that she loves him and then she'd get married to him? But her wedding dress was nice though. The movie is almost two hours long and they filled 146 minutes of the movie with absolute nonsense. Like the, <laughs> for over an hour and a half, the movie was just a lot of talking and a lot of nonsense and a lot of just like non-essentials. And they leave the meat of the movie till the last 10 minutes because once again, I'm going to spoil it. The girl dies at the end. Why does she die? It seems like the consigliere was double crossing the guy. But then we are not, we don't know why he even decided to double cross the guy. Was someone out to get Massimo? She just died right after she found out that she was pregnant. And I was just like, what sort of nonsense ending was it? By the time the movie ended, I was so pissed. I was like, ah! And the interesting thing is that on IMDb, it has a 3.8 rating. But on Google, it has 86% rating. And I just want to ask the people that give such a high rating. Was it the sex scene? Was that what got you people on fire? You're like, yes, amazing sex scene five star because that movie is a two one and a half star movie and it was just like the movie had so much potential that's what makes me so angry even the erotic that it says it is it's not most of the scenes in it didn't feel erotic it felt eh. i feel like the guy should have been given a fade you know because his haircut was odd the way he was lighted was odd and their camera choices were very odd too like at some specific points where they were supposed to be a close-up so that we see their emotions. It was a wide shot. And I was like, these were two protagonists that we didn't know, didn't care. And when she died, I was like, eh. My whole point is 365 days or DNI wasn't that great of a movie. If you have seen 365 days, let me know what you thought about it. Did you enjoy it? Did you all, were you all in for the sex scenes? And if you were, do better. Let me know. What did you like about 365 days? And if you haven't seen it, don't bother. It's not worth your time. Anyway, I'm done with this movie. My name is Ifa Labi and I'll see you.